You want the price advantage of a manufactured home, but you also want the advantages of community living. But you're not too excited about renting the land. Is a resident-owned community your answer? Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Russ Watson. I created Florida Manufactured Home Living to enrich the lives of manufactured homeowners and to educate the public on its benefits. In this video, we will explore resident-owned communities, or ROCs. These communities are organized into three different types. We will discuss each along with the advantages and disadvantages. As a bonus, I'll talk about the resources available on our website and where to find more information. Let's dig in. There are three types of resident-owned communities here in Florida. These are subdivisions, co-ops, and condominiums. Let's dive a little deeper into each type. In a subdivision, homes are considered to be real estate. An HOA may exist if there is common property or deed restrictions. If so, it is governed under Chapter 720 of the Florida Statutes. This is the Northwood subdivision, zoned for mobile homes. Each lot is platted individually, and as you can see, relative to nearby lots for site-built homes, these lots are quite small. Double-wide and single-wide manufactured homes are throughout the neighborhood. The homes and land are considered real estate. There is no homeowners association here, making this about the same as any common residential neighborhood. Today, these types of developments have been prohibited by zoning regulations in most of our state. There are a few lots available. Palm Bay Colony is a deed-restricted subdivision with amenities and common areas. You own the individual lot and your property is real estate. There's a community HOA organized under Florida Statute 720, which governs the common areas. Deed restrictions dictate the type of homes, HOA membership, and many other facets of life in the community. This is one of the prettiest communities I have seen. Co-ops were often formed when residents in a land lease community joined together and bought the park. Whispering Creek Co-op can be seen here on the county assessor's map. It is shown with each home encircled but none of the lots are delineated. The mobile home park to the east has no such markings. The subdivision to the west has the lot boundaries clearly shown. Whispering Creek is an older community with many single wides and some double wide units. It may not be the fanciest of parks, but its future is in the hands of its own residents and it's only about five minutes to the beach. Tropical Isles is representative of the resort class co-ops found around Florida. In the co-op arrangement, you own a share, but not an individual lot. And not everyone in the park will own shares. In fact, as many as 30 to 50 percent may remain as renters. The condominium form of community is the least common for manufactured housing. Some parks were converted to condos, but most started out that way. Similar to subdivisions, you own your own lot, but you are required to have an HOA and Chapter 718 of the Florida Statutes applies. Hidden Harbors in downtown Stewart is such a project. The recreational area to the northeast houses a small clubhouse, swimming pool, and shuffleboard courts. The community you see here is a more elaborate park. Here you can live in a waterfront resort community with luxury amenities at far less than anything site-built. 
If you have visited this community or want to guess where it is, let me know in the comments. Trailer Estates, one of the oldest resident-owned parks for mobile homes in Florida, does not fall into any of these types. Developed in the late 50s, it was changed to a park and recreational district through legislation. So, there are exceptions. The HOA Board of Directors is responsible for running the business side of the community. Very few are actually run by the board. Professional managers are employed by the HOA to run the park. These community managers must be certified professionals. The community will also need the services of an attorney. Most HOA board members have little or no experience and need guidance with regard to their legal obligations, the operation of the HOA, and the limitations of their authority. Next, we will get into the advantages and disadvantages of these arrangements. If you have any questions on ROCs, please leave them in the comments section and our community will try to get you some answers. In all three types of ownership, residents control the community. You pay property tax, but it is much less due to the cost of the homes. Homestead exemptions can further reduce taxes. A monthly HOA fee is generally quite low compared to lot rent. In simple subdivisions, there may be no HOA at all. Subdivisions and condominium developments are very difficult for investment groups to purchase. It was once thought co-ops served as protection against the community being sold. However, that is no longer true, and a number of communities have had their boards vote to sell the community out from under the residents. This leads me to another possible problem. Rogue boards can destroy a community. This can occur when few are interested and even fewer pay attention to what the HOA is doing. Statutes and bylaws provide some protection, but boards have pretty broad powers. Assessments occur in resident-owned communities. This is a simple division of costs for repairs or projects approved by the board. Depending upon the bylaws, these may or may not need approval by the community. This might be particularly onerous after a hurricane when major damage has occurred to the park. In co-ops and condominiums, rules are generally in place governing the appearance of each home and the lot. The HOA board is empowered with enforcement and while occasionally they may be overzealous, the community will usually look pretty nice. This is not true in unrestricted subdivisions where an individual is free to do with his lot whatever he or she pleases. Unique to co-ops is the mix of renters and shareholders. The shareholders HOA runs the park, while the renters simultaneously operate an HOA to represent their interests. This creates an owner-renter relationship very similar to land-lease communities. In many parks, it's one big happy family, but in some, it's the Hatfields and the McCoys. Now you know a little more about manufactured home communities. Your choice will be based on a mix of budget, financial goals, lifestyle choices, and what's available in the region you choose to live. What's most important, regardless of your choice, is that you know the deal before you sign. I said earlier we would talk about some of the resources available on the website to further investigate these opportunities. Links to each of the statutes are found on the legal page of our website. Printable versions are available as well. You'll find links to the Florida ROC and Mid-Florida ROC organizations on our Buyers Resource page. We continue to add additional resources. If there is a site or other resource you think should be shared with the community, please leave a comment in the chat. This has been an introductory video on resident-owned communities. Additional videos are planned covering each type in greater detail. If community living interests you, 
I suggest you review my other videos and see if a manufactured housing community will meet your needs. You can just click on my picture or the channel title below. Please give me a thumbs up for this video if you found it helpful. It will really help. You can leave comments below as well. Thanks and see you next time.